Okay, um, in this video, we have two trick problems that both involve limits that we want to try to tackle. Um, the first one here, we have x times the sine of x divided by 1 minus the cosine of x. And we want to take that limit as x approaches 0. Um, clearly, just taking 0 and plugging it in here doesn't work, because this would be 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0. This is going to be 0 on top. So we end up with a 0 divided by 0. And as we've explained in previous videos, uh, that's totally meaningless. It's, it's indeterminate, so that doesn't get us very far. Um, and the only theorem limits that we really have is that the limit of the sine of theta divided by theta as this goes to 0 this equals 1, and that's also true for the reciprocal of this. Theta divided by the sine of theta, taking the limit as theta go to 0, that 2 equals 1. But there doesn't seem to be any way to try to use this to help us with this problem here. So, we tried to see are there any trig identities that could help us out, and we don't see any. So, not knowing what else to do, we took this expression here. We took this expression and we multiplied it by the conjugate of this, if you will. 1 plus the cosine of x over 1 plus the cosine of x. And the reason for this is really it's an act of desperation. Um, if we multiply this, we know that the cosine terms will go away. We get a cosine squared. Maybe we'll start getting new trig terms coming into here that might make the problem more user-friendly, if you will. So, let's see what happens here. In the numerator, we're just going to have x times the sine of x times this 1 plus the cosine of x and here then we're going to have multiplying these two conjugates together we have 1 these terms cancel out and we have 1 minus the cosine squared of x and of course that is just the sine squared of x. So let's write that in. Here we have sine squared of x. And this and that cancel. So now we have x divided by the sine of x. plus x times the cosine of x divided by the sine of x. And we want this limit as x goes to 0. Now it's looking a whole lot better because we know what this is. That's 1. We just dated that before, and we know what this is. That too is one. In fact, let's just split this up into two limits here. This is the limit x over the sine of x, x goes to zero, plus the limit as x goes to 0 of x divided by the sine of x times the cosine of x. And again, here we have the limit of a product of two functions. And the limit of this product is equal to the limit of this function times the limit of this function. 
somewhere in your textbook you have a theorem that proves that that this right here is the same thing as the limit of this times the limit of this. The limit of this product is the same thing as the limit of this function times the limit of this function. And of course, this is just one, we know that. And it's x goes to zero, the cosine of zero is one. So this right here is just one. And this is just one. So this right here, one plus one is two. So our limit this equals two. So the whole thing really hinged upon really was an act of desperation, multiplying top and bottom by this conjugate, hoping that that would get this into a different form that would allow us to work the problem, and indeed eventually that's what happened. So let's see now about this one. Here we have the sine of 4x. divided by the sine of x. Now we want the limit as this goes to zero. And there's no theorem limits that can help us. That is by considering sine of theta over theta or theta divided by the sine of theta like we had in this problem. Um, so here, we're starting to think of maybe trig identities. And look what we have. We've got the sine of 4x. And is there a trig identity for that? Well, there is the double angle formula. The sine of 2 times x. We know what that is. That's 2 times the sine of x times the cosine of x. So following the same pattern, this expression here is twice what you have on this side of the equation. So the sine of 4x, that will equal 2 times the sine of 2x times the cosine of 2x. So you can rewrite this. We have 2 times the sine of 2x times the cosine of 2x divided by the sine of x. And we want the limit as x goes to 0. But here we still have these pesky, this troublesome sine functions. We put x equal to 0, that's 0, and that's going to be 0. But here, Again, we have our double angle formula. This is this. So once again, we can rewrite the numerator. It's going to be 2 times this stuff. That's going to be 4 times the sine of x times the cosine of x. That's 2 times the sine of 2x is 2 times this. And we have this, the cosine of 2x divided by the sine of x. Now these things go away. Now we can go ahead and just plug in x equals 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. Times 4 equals 4. This limit right here equals 4. So this time the whole thing hinged upon sizing this up and our theorem limits couldn't be of much use to us, but it should make us think that we ought to be able to find a way to 
rewrite this using the trig identity based upon our double angle formula. And once we did that, uh, we were able to make two identity changes, really. Writing this like this, or writing this one like this, and then, again, using this formula to replace this. Once we did that, the whole thing pretty much came into place for us. So that's it for these two problems. Uh, come back and join us for the next video. We have two more trig limit type problems that again are a little bit more of the complicated kind.